Bob Lesson. I've been working with Keen Engineering on their super concentrator. We're going to go through a couple of pieces today. First the basic kit, how it comes, then we'll set it up for you and we'll run some material a little bit later. Um, you'll see the kit here, it comes with the buckets and the, the adjusting bracket. We've got a crossover tube for the material, the water kit with the spray hose, we've got the sluice with the rubber mat inside. And that's how the kit comes. Next step will be showing you the setup. Okay, the next step is we're going to put together the crossover tube. It's real simple. Just a little bit of water on the end and sort of twist it right into the fitting. Take the second bucket, a little bit of water, and twist it right into the fitting. Bring your bracket up. You're going to end up with about three quarters of an inch per foot. So two, two and a half inches to start over here is about right. Set your sluice up. And your water kit. That's your basic setup. Next step, we'll get it ready to run some material. Okay, a few items I like to have with me when I'm working in the field, either there to do cleanup or at home when I do cleanup. A scoop for loading the material. Can never do any of these operations without a snuffer bottle. Nice snuffer bottle to have out there. Your wife's extra toothbrush, just don't tell her. A chopstick, and we'll go through that later. I use that with the mat. Um, we use a, a, a wetting agent of some sort. This is King Gold Drop, works great. Also, if we're working in the desert, we'll use the clay gone to keep the clay down and back out of the recirculating system. The battery, this is way overkill for a battery. Normally what I use is, this is a 12 volt. I use a wheelchair battery, much easier to carry around. They'll last a long time. They, it will run your machine for a weekend, no problem you should then have a chance to recharge it after that. Last but not least, coffee can. Use the coffee can for a tailings bucket. It keeps you from having to dig around in the tailings to get it out. That way you can run more material in one run. Okay. So we are loading up some water here. Um, you should have around 10 gallons to run this if you're out in the desert. Um, what I'm doing here is just loading it up, getting it ready to go. And uh, when you're in the desert using this, run it for your cleanup in the evening, then let the water settle overnight, get rid of the muck in the, or pour the clean water off, get rid of the muck in the bottom and start over. A little bit about the use. The started to use this as a cleanup device for all of our other operations. We've used this up on the Yuba River to clean up dredge concentrates. Uh, we can clean up two six inch dredges in an evening. Um, running the fines through here works really nicely. Um, we use it out in the desert to clean up after our um, dry washer runs. When we use it in areas where we're only dealing with real fine gold um, gnome, we, we classify down to about a, an eight, number eight screen. When we use it out in the desert, we're using a number four screen because there's just not as much super fine gold out there and the, the machine will catch what there is. Um, I have Lately, we've been seeing it being used as a redundant recovery device for people who are running hard rock. So they'll use it as the last thing to test their tailings, make sure that everything is being caught by their tables. And now I think I'm ready to go ahead and get it set up. The first thing I do is run a little bit of water on it, back to the toothbrush, a little bit of whatever your wetting agent is, and um, Splash some water up on it. The toothbrush is used just to rub over the mat before you fire it up. It keeps the, the uh, air bubbles from sticking. And any place there's an air bubble left on the mat, left on the mat, no gold will stick. So we'll fire the thing up. 
and I don't, I, I'm betting this won't show on the camera, but I'm looking down at it here, and we've got just a few air bubbles here and there, and I'll just take this toothbrush and just make sure there's no air sticking to the mat. Once you've got it running, you're going to want to see the water's flowing much faster than on most of the recovery or small sluices. That is part of the design. You want the water running quickly. It is what helps to develop the low pressure zone underneath the Hungarian ripple that catches that super fine gold. And we'll take a look at a close up of the mat in a little bit and show you how it actually recovers the gold. And this is the way it should be running. And then the next step is just adding material. Okay, we're, we're back with a couple of more things on adjustments before we actually run material. The clamp up at the top is real simple. The mat just sticks right underneath it. Sort of take it at an angle and just press it underneath that riff. When you get it underneath, you want it to be sticking over the end about a quarter of an inch. That way you'll have no accumulation underneath here, which becomes, can become a problem. So that's how the mat sets in. The header box. The header box is adjustable. When it gets to you, it'll be a little bit high. If there's leaks around the edge, you just take it with your thumbs and just press it down a little bit till those leaks go away. If it somehow gets smashed down at some point in its life, it will in my garage, I tell you that for sure. You just take a large screwdriver, put it underneath, and just pry it up just a little bit. Okay, we're looking at the pump. The pump does have a valve on it, but when you are running it, run it wide open. The valve is here to use when you do your cleanup. You can shut the water down and it'll come into the tube with the uh, handy cleanup here. But you want the water flow. The water flow is really important to driving the, the riffles on this map. And the way this we found this works is the really, really fine gold ends up underneath the Hungarian riffles right at the top. It comes over the top and gets sucked underneath. The coarse little pieces of gold will get stuck into your riffles, or the, the, the rubber notches here. But the Hungarian riffle is what catches that really, really fine gold. That's what we're all trying to catch. And it, it's why the Kane is calling this a miracle mat, because we'll get you know, multiple hundred mesh gold will get stuck underneath this riffle and it actually tends to stick right between the edge of the riffle and that first notch. And we'll show that to you a little bit later on the close-up. Okay, I've started the device up. Each time I go to run a new batch, I check the riffles again, make sure we don't have any air bubbles stuck. The, the gold will stick in here, but any place there's an air bubble again, it will not stick. So we're going to add some material. I want to show you this. We're not using white sand or anything that's really easy to process. We're using the most difficult material to process. This is really heavy black sand. Most of this is from Nome. Some of this is the larger stuff is from the Yuba River but we want to make sure that we're, we're demoing this with the very hardest to use material. Uh, so we show that you know it, it does its job. So we're going to load it with a scoop right in this front plate. You don't have to be real shy. It'll run itself through very nicely. Now to the use of the chopstick. Just work any of that material. And as soon as that top starts to clear, add some more material. Okay, so as we load this, the coarser little pieces of gold um, will end up in the sluice down a little bit, especially if you're driving it to its maximum capacity, which is what I want to do when I'm working on dredge cleanup. You don't really have to worry about your micro gold. It's going to get underneath that first two or three riffles and it's going to stay there. So if you see a little bit of the coarser stuff down in the sluice, don't worry about it. You're not going to lose any of your gold processing it. If you're really overdriving it and see it down toward the end, slow down a little bit. But we're going to just continue to load this. 
then we'll run through the rest of the process here in a minute. Bob, I got a question for you. Um, how many pounds an hour can you run? Let's say like a five gallon bucket. We're running two five gallon buckets in about two hours once we've um, classified the rocks off when we do dredge cleanup. Okay, so you can run two five gallon buckets in about an hour? About two hours. Okay, and that yeah. is that that's concentrate from a dredge? That's concentrate from a dredge, and what you'll end up with in, in your sluice is all your gold, all your lead, any other metals that you've got from your dredge will end up in the sluice. Okay. Is that, um, and when you classify it for dredging, you're going to typically go down to, you said like a number eight? Number eight screen is what okay. we're using on dredging. Yes. Eight mesh screen, all right. Um, so if you're, are you talking about full buckets? Because a full bucket of, of dredge concentrates can weigh around like 80 pounds or something, or even heavier. Well, when, when we clean up the, the six inch, which is the one that we're using, we're using two six inches up on the Yuba, um, it's probably two thirds full okay. of the uh, minus eight. Okay. So. It's a lot of, that's a lot of material to go through. It's a lot of material. You just continue to run it. You'll end up using your tailing bucket to, to dump it out and you just keep it running. Okay. That's a lot, that's good. So when you're dry washing with it, you're doing dry wash tailings. Does that go that little, probably a little faster, wouldn't it be? Dry wash tailings. I can run uh, a dry washer 151 with a crew all day, and we'll run the tailings out of that or the the concentrates out of that in less than an hour. Okay, that's real good. Okay, we're just finishing up loading this material in. Yep. People that run cleanup devices often use a magnet when they're doing this to take out some of these magnetics. I don't recommend that at all. The idea behind this riffle is that it catches that really fine micro gold, and if you use a magnet on it, you're going to find that you're going to disturb that micro gold and move it along. So I keep my fingers out of it. The only thing that I do to it is if I'm running really heavy material, is I'm back to my chopstick and I take the chopstick and we'll show this on a close-up but I run the chopstick from the edge to the center on about the top four ripples just to make sure we still have that fluid material moving because those are the most important four ripples in this operation. Um, how often would you clean it up? When the gold starts to fill the riffles down about more than a third, and I mean okay. filled, then I would clean it up. I have seen um, dredge cleanups up in Alaska where it's been yellow down to about here, and we're talking five ounces plus of gold. So most of us that are out doing this on weekends aren't going to come up with anywhere near that much gold. You don't have to clean it up until you're done with okay. your concentrates. So on time-wise, would you do it like... Uh as an average number, like once an hour, once a half hour, if you didn't have if you didn't have all that much gold, I wouldn't clean it up till I was done with my concentrates. Okay, I, I just you? don't think it needs to be cleaned up. The only thing you need to do is, if you do feel it's getting packed, is just unpack those top ripples. Okay. Using you, the round tip, the gold will actually go right around the tip and won't be disturbed. And okay. again, we'll show that to you on the close up. All right, cool. What you'll find when you're running this is that the larger gold will settle itself further down on the mat. You'll see that these ribs here are starting to accumulate the, the coarser gold. 
Um, that doesn't really worry me. You know, as it works its way down, if it gets too far, you'll want to slow your, your feed down. But what we're really trying to catch here is the really micro gold. And if the camera's showing this, it's actually sitting right on the ridge here, and it will eventually work its way underneath that first riffle. And once it's under here, that micro gold that sits underneath that riffle, it's going to stay there till you clean up. Okay, we're going to do a little close up here on the mat and, and how it's working and get a little closer look at the profile. As the gold comes over the top of the first riffle, the coarser material is actually ended up getting trapped in these little ribs. The really, really fine gold that we're really looking for is actually coming around and ending up right underneath here. When you saw me using the chopstick, I'm moving it from that first rib from the outside to the center from the outside to the center on about the first four riffles. That's enough to keep that black sand fluid motion going and it'll actually clear out without disturbing the gold. And this will give you a look at the edge profile, how deep it is, and why it can hold so much gold in there if you're lucky enough to find it. So that'll, that'll give you a look at the profile. Okay, we've let it run a couple of minutes after we've added the last of the material through it just to clean out anything that's light in here. And now we're going to go through the cleanup process. We've got ourselves a second bucket, or actually in this case a third bucket. I use this as the place that the mat goes and the material goes so that we can clean it up very quickly and efficiently. So first thing we're going to do, turn off the water move the sluice over to our new bucket. We're going to take the water valve and turn it off so that we can use our spray nozzle. We're going to gently pull the mat into the bucket. We're going to turn our water pump back on and we're going to just clean this thing out. At this point, we've got the mat and all of the gold into our bucket. We're going to put our hose nozzle away, turn our pump back, valve back on, just get ourselves some water in on top of the mat, make it easier to clean the mat up. At that point, shut it down. Shake our mat up, check it for gold, put that away, now you've got your bucket of concentrates and from there we're going to get it into a pan, pan the last of it out, get as much gold as we can out. In my case that last cup of material that we have, I get all the gold I can get out of it and then I take that last cup and put it as a primer for my next run. That way I'm not using chemicals or anything else in the process. So from there, we'll get this into a pan. Okay, so we're ready to get our cons into the pan. Put a little bit of water in. Dump the rest back into your bucket. Then we're just gonna splash a little water in. Clean that bucket out. At this point, we got roughly a cup of material. That's got everything that was in here. That'll include all the heavies and your gold, and that's what you have to work from here. As we just pull back the sands a little bit, and that's the gold that we're trying to catch. Most other devices will not catch that gold. And there is a lot of that out there. So you'll see underneath the sand here is the coarser gold. 
we can certain we're going to pan that down and get that. But what I want to point out is this is really, really fine gold, and it just paints itself in the bottom of your pan. Now we'll go on to the next process, get rid of some of our, our heavy metallics, and then we can pan this down. Okay, we're going to take as much of the magnetics out as we can and, and then pan this down. You're going to want to use a smaller magnet so you don't get gold in there. Drop it a couple times and then take it out of the mix. This will speed up our panning process tremendously. Okay, we're, we're recording now. Okay, so we've got most of the magnetics out. We're going to work it down the best we can and get as much of the gold as we, we can get out of here. You'll see we've got this really super fine gold, and what we'll do is just push it into a pile. Just like that, and use a snuffer just to get it out of our pan. Sometimes you can see a little better, and then lay it out. Holy shit, sorry. I can say wow. You can if you wish. <laughs> but then it's just a, a, a process, just moving the black sand away uh -huh. and repeat the process. So you'll see I'm trying to get clean gold up there at the top. Just slowly working the black sand out. And when I've got it worked out, I'll brush it into a pile. And snuff it out. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool, Bob. I've never tried that technique before. Yeah, the, the finer the gold is, the uh, harder it is to get it to play nice. Yeah. See, actually, I didn't need to with the fine stuff, huh? It's like you've done this a couple times before. Yeah, once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> but this is where I want to spend my time, rather than playing with smoothing it into a concentrator. Yeah, and here you know you got everything too. This is the cool. payoff. So I'm just continuing to work it. You can see there's still some nice coarse gold in there. Let me zoom in on that real quick, Bob. Hang on. Okay. And a lot of that's that gnome gold, huh? Yeah, the really, really fine stuff is the gnome gold. Okay. Now this coarser stuff, we never see anything like that up there. I mean, that's incredibly coarse gold. It would be for up there, huh? Yeah. This is Yuba gold, the coarser stuff. At one point, I would probably do one more classification just to clean this up, but I'm going to take out the majority of it and get it into my snuffer bottle here. Having one that won't fit up your uh, snuffer bottle is actually a very good problem. Yeah, it just shows, a, that just shows you got to classify it down a little further, that's right. all. So I've got a few there that won't go through. Again, good problem to have. Yeah. Okay, so as we go through this, each time we will end up with a nice little pile of gold to snuffer up, and we've got less and less of the material. You'll see there's some nice rocks here that we've 
Um, as we've panned, we've moved into the corner. We'll just scrape those up and take them out of the pan. And now it's just a process of repeat and repeat until you get down to where no visible gold yeah. is left. That last tablespoon at the end of the process um, is going to have some gold you can't see on it. That's the material I take. Put it in the sluice next time I run and you'll just have it in your next run. So that's the process. Hope you enjoy your machine.